We're going to continue our discussion of looking at entities in large text collections. Before, we use tools to figure out when two different strings were referring to the same entity, a problem of co-reference. We also talked about how to figure out when a string was talking about an entity as defined in some knowledge base like Wikipedia. Today we're going to be talking about how to discover the relationships between two entities that are mentioned in a text. We first begin with entity linking. Given entities that are mentioned in some context, we need to figure out what entities are being talked about. So here we have a bunch of strings with Chicago, and none of them refers to the city in Illinois. Some of these refer to a font, some of these refer to a band, some of these refer to an album made by the same band. There are also other entities mentioned here, such as the Macintosh operating system, version 7 and version 8, and Macintosh more generally, released by the company Apple. If we want computers to really understand the text of these documents, we also need to extract the relationships between the entities from the text. So can we learn that Chicago the band released the album Chicago 8? Can we learn that the Chicago font is used in? If you could do this, there are a number of applications that would benefit. We've already talked about question answering before in sort of a general sense. You can look to see what links to each other in Wikipedia. We're going to go beyond that application and actually say George III is the son of George II and the antagonist of George Washington. If I have that specific information, can I do a better job of answering questions? You can also apply this to scientific literature. There are thousands of new scientific publications coming out every day, and a human being doesn't have the time to read all of them. But there is important information in there. If, for example, that you could figure out this facilitates the regulation of a particular neurotransmitter, and you can extract that automatically, you can send a targeted alert, hey, uh, you're a pharmaceutical engineer who is interested in this neurotransmitter. We just found a new way that you might be able to uh, make a new drug. Or you're a doctor and you're looking for new side effects of a drug. This sort of thing could be mined automatically from the literature. This is also a big use case in automatic trading. If you want to know that a company has fired their CEO or that a company has been acquired, uh, if you can detect that automatically and then execute trades based on that, you might have a competitive advantage. While most of these approaches are now neural, more traditional approaches often use parse trees to find the relationship between two entities. So you have two entities in blue here. So this is looking at the relationship between a drug and some condition. You go through, say, a dependency parse that gets you from one entity to the other, create a feature vector encoding that dependency parse path, and then you use that to feed into a classifier saying, what kind of relationship, if any, is there between acetaminophen and anaphylaxis? A recent paper from Google went through the different ways that you can do neural relationship mining. You can either do this as a single classification attached to the CLS token. Uh, that would feel a lot like the dependency parse example that I talked about before. Or create a classification that pools the mentions across the various entities that appear in the sentence. So you're not using the single CLS token, but using the final layer of BERT to uh, create representations of each of the possible entities, and then you do a pairwise uh, classification. Alternately, you can add additional tokens to the input to BERT to create entity markers 
that allow BERT to focus a little bit more on, hey, I know from the very first layer that this is an entity, I need to do something with this to make a decision about whether in the final layer these are going to be in a particular relationship or not. And this paper goes through a lot of the options for how to set up those entity markers. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. So this was a very modern paper from Google, and it uses supervised data to train a large neural model. So while this is a modern approach from Google, let's go back to one of the founders of Google before there was a Google. Sergey Brin, who is also, I should mention, a UMD alum. In the paper, Extracting Patterns and Relations from the World Wide Web, Sergey said, okay, let's start with some database that lists entities. And we're going to look for where those entities appear in some text collection. Then we're going to extract the phrases that surround those entities. So for example, if you get a bunch of entity pairs where you have entity one apostrophe s headquarters in entity two, that's a string of text that might allow you to infer that string two is the location of string one, where those are two entities. And you can do this in a cycle. You find pairs of entities, tuples, that appear together. You go out, search for text that connects those two things together. You create new templates, search for new entities in those templates, and repeat. So in some cases this works really well, but in other cases you might run into problems. So for example, you might learn the template Seattle-based Boeing, and you generalize that so you have entity one hyphen based entity two, and then you might learn that Jelly is a company that's based in Apple. This is obviously incorrect, so how can you do better? The snowball system uh, is a way of improving this, and here what they do, instead of just taking this at face value, they look at all the places where you have an organization and a location together, and then they cluster all of the different ways that those two things appear together to get a more probabilistic sense of, hmm, if I see X based Y, Given a organization and a location, what is the probability that this is actually saying that Boeing is based in Seattle? Since then, there have been new approaches that do similar things. There was this great project called Nell out of Carnegie Mellon that was intended to be a never-ending learner from language. And they even had a Twitter bot that would say, all right, I've figured out that acres is a currency. Is that right or wrong? And you on Twitter could interact with it and say, no, no, acres usually is not a currency. It's a measurement of land area. So you probably got that wrong and you could correct it. And one of the things that this new approach from the team at Carnegie Mellon did is that rather than looking at these in isolation, it would look for sets of relationships that would be together and so that it could make inferences. So that if you figure out that a stadium of a team is at the same latitude and longitude of a city, then, oh, then you could probably infer that that sports team that plays in that stadium is probably the home sports team of that location. My former student Mohit took a similarly unsupervised approach to learning the relationship between characters in novels. I mentioned this briefly in the co-reference section. And this looks a little bit like a neural topic model, where you have two mentions of entities, you see all the words that appear around those two entities, and you can figure out Romeo and Juliet are clustered together with similar words as Orpheus and Eurydice, and from that you can infer that there's this cluster that may refer to being in love. One challenge with both supervised and unsupervised relationship mining is that relationships change. This is something that Mohit and his collaborator Snigna looked at extensively in the unsupervised case. You can also get 
supervision from knowledge bases because those change over time. And this is more work from the Nell project, looking at how you can learn when relationships between entities change by looking at the edit record in Wikipedia. Today we've been talking about relationships between entities, but that relies on a lot of things to come before you do that final step. You need to know when entities are mentioned. You need to be able to know when a string is referring to another entity. This is a problem of co-reference. Often you need to match this to some knowledge base. This is entity linking. And then finally, you may want to learn how two entities are related to each other. This finally is relationship mining. To do all of this, you need data and you need models. And hopefully you're getting a sense of the pipelines that get developed in real natural language processing applications that you might use in a company or some real world application. Even though this was a brief introduction, keep these approaches in mind as they may be useful as you do things like create question answering systems, try to help people navigate large document collections, or try to make decisions about when to buy a stock or not. These building blocks can help you figure out the relationship between the text on a page and real world entities. If you wanna see more videos like this, check the video description for the course that comes from the link down below. You can then see the context and the correct order for watching these videos. YouTube will gleefully show you stuff in the wrong order. If you want other people to see this video, provide a big gradient to the recommendation algorithm by clicking the like and subscribe button down below.